Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. This is season five, episode four, number 104. Uh, Today we're up to 1964 in our history of the Spaghetti Western, so we're going to talk about Twins from Texas. It's one of the last comedies, so hopefully, and we get into more dramas from now on. Uh, We're also going to talk about whatever happened to Pedro Sanchez. Uh, who are those guys? Will be Jose Torres, one of my favorites. Uh, film of the week is seven dollars to kill or seven dollars on the red. Uh, we don't have any posters this week or autographs or books, but we do have a big weekly news segment. So let's get into it. And let's start off with uh, the Twins from Texas. <clears throat> this is also known as the Italian title E Gemelli del Texas. The Spanish title is Los Gemelos del Texas. Uh, English titles are Texas Twins and the Twins from Texas. Uh, 64 Italian-Spanish co-production produced by Emo Bistolfi, directed by Steno, comedy director. Story is by Santos Alcacer, Giulio Sarnici, and Renzo Tarabusi. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Uh, the cinematography is by Manuel Hernandez San Juan. It's in Eastman color. Music is by Gianni Ferio. It's a short one, eight, only 89 minutes, which is the minimum for a, a full uh, Western. Uh, the cast consists of Walter Chiari playing Ezekiel and Joe, Raimondo Vianello playing Jonathan Bullivan and the kid, Diana Loris plays Fanny. Uh, Alfonso Rojas plays Milanza or McKenzie. And uh, that's it for the the cast people you might know. Uh, Although this is a comedy, it's not slapstick. More like a comedy team of uh, Rowan and Martin from Laugh-In than uh, Abbott and Costello or some of the slapstick um, comedy teams. Franco and Ciccio come to mind. Uh, The story goes, uh, during an attack on a small wagon train by Indians and bandits, two sets of twins, played by Walter Chiari and Raimondo Vianello in dual roles as infants in diapers are separated. Two of the kids are taken by a cavalry officer, the other two by a bandit. Over the opening credits, we see the twins grow from young boys to young men. Uh, The adopted children of an officer, they become a journalist. Ezekiel and Jonathan, while the other two become wanted bandits, Joe and Kid, uh, who attempt to become members but failing in their father's killer's corporation. Uh, it's funny because in this this scene they fail in their attempt to become members, and as as uh, trainees they wear black outfits with KP as for killer's corporation or KC printed on their backsides. Uh, anyways, they fail miserably, even though they're being trained by Jeff, who plays is played by Tito Garcia, uh, in their attempt to become members of the syndicate. Arnold, played by Miguel Del Castillo, wants to rid the town of the journalist, the other pair of twins, in their attempt to close his saloon. He pays Milanza, who's Alfonso Rojas, the head of the Killers Corporation, a thousand dollars to have them eliminated. Uh, He also takes out an insurance policy because he figures they're going to be eliminated. He can claim the the inheritance on the policy. When the outlaw twins arrive in Silver City, we get a number of mistaken identity scenes. Uh, This leads to misunderstandings that upset the intended crime. Finally, the two sets of twins dressed alike in black face each other on the street. Arnold decides to take matters into his own hands and decides to blow up Jonathan and Ezekiel with dynamite, but then becomes confused when he sees both sets of twins at the same time, dressed the same, and during his indecision on who's who's who, blows himself up. The twins rejoice in finding each other, and the film ends. 
this is not on VHS. It's not on DVD or Blu-ray. It is available on YouTube if you want to watch it. I suggest it's only for completists or anyone who has a low threshold for comedy. Uh, as far as talking points are concerned, another Italian comedy with the comedy team of Chiari and Vianello with the Western as a backdrop for their antics. The Italian comedians Walter Chiari and Raimondo Vianello play dual roles in this comedy Western of two sets of twins meeting years after separation as babies. Uh, the most clever part and the funniest part of this is in, during the opening scenes, we, two see, we see two wagon trains with two sets of twins in each wagon. Uh, the first one has the babies being fed like by intravenous vials down to nipples in their mouths. The other set is being fed bottles via a trough sim system from the uh, seat of the wagons. And then they shove two bottles down into their mouths. Uh, this was filmed at Golden City location north of Madrid. Uh, the obligatory saloon singer is present for a musical number and a temperance march, led by Ezekiel and Jonathan, a journalist. Little dialogue, but plenty of lowbrow humor with their misidentifications. Uh, and as far as trivia goes, in the opening scene, when the cavalry arrives on the scene to uh, beat off the bandits and the Indians, you can see the entrance to the graveyard used in fistful of dollars in the background. Uh, as far as actors' bios go, we've already talked about Ezekiel and Joe, played by Walter Chiari, whose real name is Walter Anta Chiarico, born in 24 and died in 1991, and Jonathan Bullivan, alias The Kid, played by Raimondo Vianello, born in 22, died in 2010. They're both covered in uh, episodes 82 and 83. Uh, the, they also appeared together in The Terrible Sheriff in 62, The Magnificent Three in 63, and Heroes of the West in 64. Fanny, paid, played by Diana Loris, real name is Anna Vega, was born in 1940. She's still with us, and we covered her in episode six and 93. Malanza, or Mackenzie, is played by Alfonso Rojas. Alfonso Rojas was born Alfonso Angel Rojas Melchiadas in Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz, Andalusia, Spain, on March 5th, 1916. Studying drawing and art, he entered the Spanish film industry after World War II as a set decorator at the Sevilla Film Studio. His photogenic and natural acting abilities encouraged him to start in the cinema with small roles in 1945. For 25 years, Rojas participated in almost 100 films as a supporting actor. Highlighting his filmography were those of the Western and adventure genre in Spanish and international films. He appeared in 37 Spaghetti Westerns. In the early 1970s, due to a stomach ailment, he left the cinema and bought a restaurant in Guadarrama, which was frequented by the people of theater and cinema. I've always wondered if he had stomach problems, why did he open a restaurant? Anyways, he retired in the 1980s and died in El Campello, Alicante, Spain, on January 20th, 1996, at the age of 80. Also, as a uh, side note here, I want to cover Senora Floto, played by Josefina Saratosa, another one of these who are these people. Josefina Saratosa was born Josefina Gaxa Pereira in Donacicia, San Sebastian, Spain, on March 5, 1911. She was a theater, film, and TV actress who was married to actor Jose Sepulveda. Uh, who was born in 1909, and he died in 1969 and appeared in around 100 films from 53 to 71. Eleven of them were spaghetti westerns. She usually played matronly, boisterous parts, such as in her role as a man in a cult with Robert Hundar, where he play, she plays the wife of Fernando Sancho. Josefina died in Madrid on December 14, 1990. She was 79. Okay, next we want to move along to Who Are Those Guys and Pedro Sanchez. Okay, Pedro Sanchez. 
<coughs> excuse me. Pedro Sanchez was born Ignacio Spala in Termini, in Maris, Tuscany, Italy, on May 5, 1924. He appeared in only 44 films, 36 of those being spaghetti westerns. Equipped with a stout body and a face typically harsh and threatening, Spala was also required to interpret villainous roles and as a parody in the western genre. In fact, he was off, often seen in a supporting role in several Franco, Frankie and Chicho and Gracia films in which he usually played Mexican bandits. He began his career in 1964 with the comic western Dewey Mafiosa Nell Far West, two, ma two mafia men in the Far West, which we've covered. Starring with a comic duo, Franco and Chicho. The same year, he continued with The Paths of Hate and The Magnificent Brutes of the West, directed by Marino Girolami. Besides the western, Spala also appeared in Lucio Fulci's Bonds of Love and Blood in 1969, and Pasquale Festa Campanile's Hitchhiking Prey in 1977, which would be his last film. He was married twice and had a son, Dr. Giuseppe Armino Spala. His grandson, monitors the Ignacio Spala Pedro Sanchez Facebook page. Uh, Ignacio Spala died on February 9th, 1995 in Casta Sierra, Perugia, Italy at the age of 71. I contacted Spala's grandson and we talked twice, but he failed to give me any background information other than what I already had. Some of uh, Pedro Sanchez's more well-known Westerns and the ones I mentioned were Two Sons of Ringo in 66. He played El Indio. Any Gun Can Play in 67. He plays Bajando or Bahunda. Uh, also in 67 in Don't Wait, Django Shoot. He plays Diego Navarro or Barica. The Son of Django in 67. He plays Thompson. God May Forgive You, Not Me, in 68, he plays Garcia Baraco Ramirez. Sabata, in 69, he plays Corincia. Adios Sabata, in 70, he plays Cascudo. And Return of Sabata, in 70, Bronco. Uh, he also pops up in 73 in The Three Supermen of the West as Navajo Joe. And his final spaghetti western, White Bang and the Hunter, in 73, he plays the role of Dollar. Uh, know his face, but don't know his name. So now you know who, who Pedro Sanchez is. And now we want to move along to whatever became of and Jose Torres. Okay, along with Jose Manuel Martin, this is one of my favorite Spanish Western bad guys. Uh, Jose Cariusiolo Torres Medina was born in Tucioto, Venezuela on June 4, 1925. Jose began his career as an actor on stage in the theater. In school workshops, his vocation was born, which later materialized in various theatrical production. His first TV appearance was in the daily 15-minute soap opera La Criada de la Grana, The Maid of the Farm in 1953 and considered the first soap opera in Venezuela. At the end of the 1950s, Torres decided to try his luck in Europe and became interested in theater activity in Italy, from which he soon made the leap to film at the dawn of the Spaghetti Westerns. He had supporting roles for over 15 years that led him to share screen with such actors as Orson Welles, Lee Van Cleef, Terence Hill, and Bud Spencer and Tomas Milian, among others, and directed by leaders of the genre like Sergio Salima, Enzo Castellari, and Giulio Petroni. In all, he, he's appeared in over 100 films and TV appearances, 29 being spaghetti westerns. But it was all not all horses, shooting, and threadbare ponchos. In a film by Pasquale Squiteteri in 1960, Yo e Dios, I and God, his role as a Sicilian priest who faced the dilemma of celibacy earned him the most important role so far in his career, and he was awarded Best Actor at the Neorealist Neo Neo Film Festival uh, and the Lacerno de Oro. He returned to Venezuela in the early 1970s where he worked in television. 
However, it was in 1995 when he lived his sweetheart, sweetest memoir. I'm sorry. Let me do that again. It was in 1995 when he lived his sweetest moment when the recognition and affection of all his country was won with his interpretation of an indigenous Takope, a minor character in the soap opera Kaina. He received devoted popularity for which he is still remembered. In 2015, he received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Latin American Film Festival. Torres is married in Maria, to Maria and the father of several children, including one of producer actress Arlette Torres. He's still living in Venezuela. Uh, some of his most noted roles are as a, in A Pistol for Ringo, he plays Henry. The Big Gun Down in 66, he plays Paco Molinas. Face to Face in 67, he plays Harold or Aaron Chase. In Run Man Run in 67, he plays Ramirez. In 68, he plays Pedro in Death Rides a Horse. In 69, he's a Mexican spy in the Five Man Army. 69, he plays Shadow. In Sartana the Gravedigger, uh, he, he was called the Holy Ghost in 71. He appears as Padre Steve. And in 73, he plays a federal marshal in court martial. In this picture right here, he's in the beginning of Any Gun Can Play when the three guys show up marching down the main street. And they're supposed to be Clint Eastwood as the man with no name, Django, and Colonel Mortimer. He plays the Colonel Mortimer role. Okay, now moving along, we go to the film of the week and Seven Dollars to Kill. Okay, this is probably my favorite Anthony Steffen film, uh, Seven Dollars to Kill, or sometimes known as Seven Dollars on the Red. The Italian title is Seven Dollari Soroso, which is the trans we translated as Seven Dollars on a Red. It's also known as Jangle. The Vultures Are Lining Up, cool name, Seven Dollars to Kill and Seven Dollars on a Red. It's a 66 Italian production directed by Albert Cardiff, whose real name is Albert, Alberto Cardone. The story is by Hamid Wright, whose real name is Amadeo Maloney. Screenplay is by Juan Cobos. And Mel Collins, who's Melchiatis, Coletti, Franciolini, and Arnie Franklin, who's Arnaldo Francolini. Cinematography is by Jose Aguayo. It's an Eastman Color and Technoscope. Music is by Francesco Damasi. There's a song called Wishville. It's sung by July Ray, who in reality is Julia de Metis, and she was married to Alessandro Alessandroni. Uh, the cast consists of Johnny Ashley, who's played by Anthony Steffen. Sybil is played by Elisa Montez. Jack Wilson, or El Chacal, or Jackal, or Sancho, played by Fernando Sancho. Jerry is played by Jerry Wilson. Emily is played by Laura Donanusiak. El Gringo, or Gringo and Chulo, is played by Jose, Jose Manuel Martinez. Rosa, or Rosita, or Rosario, is played by Carol Brown who's in fact Carla Kahlo. Bill is played by Span Canveri, who's Fartico Conversi. Some other names you might recognize are Walt, played by Franco Gula. And Jerry Ashley as a child is played by David Mancori, who's the son of cinematographer Sandro Mark Mancori, who was born, uh, I'm sorry, Jerry was born in, I'm sorry, Sandro was born in 1933 and died in 2009. Okay, the story goes, Johnny Ashley, played by Anthony Steffen, has been away leading a wagon train. During his absence, a man, of, a gang of outlaws attack his ranch, kill his wife and kidnap his young son, Jerry, played by Jerry Wilson. Determined to take revenge, Ashley refuses the service of the sheriff and spends many years during which Johnny becomes famous for his exploits as a gunfighter. Still, he is failed to find his son and outlaw Sancho, played by Fernando Sancho, who kidnapped him. Sancho has raised Jerry as his son, making him into an outlaw. At Wishville, the restless and discouraged Johnny arrives just when the situation is tense because of the exploits of the Sancho gang. 
Ashley and her younger sister, Sybil, played by Lisa Montez, who has fallen in love with Jerry. And the sheriff, assisted by the townsmen, disperse the bandits and kill Sancho. Jerry, furious over Sancho's death, rushes to avenge who he believes is his father and comes to face to face with Johnny, who learns Jocko's dying woman that Jerry is his real son. A duel between John and Jerry is now in inevitable. Set during a heavy rainstorm, the dramatic confrontation between father and son almost reaches gothic dimensions. The lashing rain flogging the two men is to galvanize their agitation. Uh, anyone who has a son, this will really hit home as the film deals with the personal tragedy of Johnny in a search for his son. Uh, it's, this, why it's my favorite is because it actually shows multiple sides of Anthony Stephan. He's much more than a cardboard actor here. Uh, Laura Donna Nusiak is perfect as a saloon aid owner and Johnny's old flame. Jerry Wilson, I think, does an admirable job as a devoted son of Jacal, who was brought up in the outlaw lifestyle, and only Sybil seems to have any warming effect on him. The music is one of, if not Francesco Damasi's best work, as there are at least three main themes and adds so much to the film. Direction by Alberto Cardone is average until the final showdown, where he really excels. Jose Aguayo's camera work is also very good, and there's plenty of action and plot to keep any Western fan satisfied. Uh, actor bios. Anthony Stephan we've covered before, especially in number 19. Elisa Montez we've covered in 69. Fernando Sancho we've covered in his own special in number 9. And Jose Manuel Martinez we've covered in number 73 and number 34. Jerry is played by Jerry Wilson, whose real name is Roberto Miali. Jerry Wilson's real name, like as I said, Roberto Miali, was born in Trieste, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, Italy in 1940. Cannot find a specific date. He's a director, writer, film, and photo romance actor. He's appeared in only 10 films and four were spaghetti westerns, including Blood at Sundown in 66, uh, Taste of Vengeance in 68 as Robert, $20,000 on number seven, 68 as Sterling Ascot. And these days he's an author of philosophy, poetry, and essays, but I can find out no other information about him. Uh, Rosa, Rosita uh, Rosario is played by Carol Brown. Her real name is Carla Callo, and she was born in Palermo, Sicily on September 21st, 1926. She was a theater, film, TV, and voice actress. She appeared in 105 films and TV appearances between 1949 and 2003. Callo appeared in six spaghetti westerns, best known were as Mrs. Temple Cordine in 1966's The Tramplers, as Rhonda Liston, in Blood and Sundown in 1966. She was married to Giorgio Mancuso and the mother of Salvatoria Mancuso. Carla died in Forana, Lazio, Italy on December 29th, 2019 at the age of 93. Okay, now we wanna to go to the uh, CD of the week. Okay, CD of the week. Uh, this came out uh, in three, two, two or three CDs that I've got. This is came out in 2012. It's the best one. It uh, came out in it from Italy, from Beat. It's on CD CR 121. It has 27 tracks. Uh, you can still buy it. The value is anywhere from 12 to 29 bucks. Then there's been uh, a couple of other releases. Uh, the original LP came out in 1966 in, from Italy on CAM, number CDR 33-19, but it only had 13 tracks and a listing time of 33 minutes and 19 seconds. 
uh, but the value is fantastic. It ranges anywhere from 108 to 400 bucks, depending on value and condition. And the last one I just want to show you is a compilation disc. And this only, again, has like 12 tracks. But if you want to pick that up, it also comes with the uh, Equilo Spork Astoria, now Far West. Uh, since we can't play any music, it's boring to talk about it whole thing about uh, composers. I thought I would add composers as we go along uh, when we do the CD of the week. And this week we'll talk about Francesco De Masi, uh, one of my favorites. He's right up there with Morricone as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's also known sometimes as Frank Mason. Uh, he was born in Rome on January 11th, 1930. His father was the Italian ambassador to Romania for many years. Francesco was a composer, conductor, arranger, songwriter, musician, horns. He started composition at the San Pietro Amiela Conservatory in Naples under his uncle, composer Achille Longo, who was born in 1900 and died in 1954. He worked for a time as a conductor of the Rome Symphonic Orchestra for RAI-TV. His first film credit was as an assistant to his uncle in the 1950s, Pact with the Devil. Francesco scored over 200 films and TV series, 48 of which were Euro Westerns, a handful with Spanish composer Manuel Parada, where one composed the score for the Italian release of the film and the other the Spanish release. Francesco actually started composing for Westerns before Ennio Morricone. His style had a distinctive sound. Many of his songs were performed by the low voiced member of the Ikentori Choir, Itori Raul Lavecchio. He's considered next to Morricone, right up there with Bruno Nicolai, as one of the best of the Spaghetti Western composers. De Masi was also very interested in classical music. He taught at the Santa Cecilia Conservatory, also conducting the Conservatory's orchestra. De Masi was married twice and has a son, Filippo De Masi, born in 67. And he's on Facebook. Okay, next we want to go to the weekly news. Okay, last week we had nothing but our bits. Uh, this week we've got a ton of stuff to go over. Uh, first of all, uh, Django, the TV series, is coming on. Uh, it's about a man who wanders around Texas at the end of the 1800s. His name is Django, and he is looking for revenge. The plot of the cult directed by Sergio Carbucci in 1966 <clears throat> is the backdrop, backdrop to the serial misinterpretation uh, of Sky and Canal Plus, created and written by Leonardo Fasoli and Madalena Ravagli. Django is now an Italian-French co-production. It premieres exclusively on Sky and Now, NOW, uh, beginning on February 17th, 2023. Uh, he looks next, nothing like Django, so don't be surprised if this is a dud. Like uh, Jay told me, it's a combination of Django, both the original and Tarantino's, and comes out uh, wrong on both ends. Next, we want to talk about quickly is a new Italian book that's been out for a while, Claudia Cardinale, The Indomitable. It's published by Cinecita Electa and edited by Claudio Spatari, who's Claudio's son. It's in Italian and English and contains 208 pages. It's being re-released in conjunction with the tribute to Cardinale at the New York Museum of Modern Art from February 3rd to 21, where they will show 20 of her films. Uh, I think the last one they show is Once Upon a Time in the West, but you can go online to the New York Museum of Modern Art website and check out when they're being shown and uh, buy tickets online. Uh, there's a new British Blu-ray release of Run Man Run, 1968, directed by Sergio Salema and starring Tomas Milian and Donald O'Brien. It's released on Eureka Entertainment on January 23rd. It's Region B. It's a limited edition of 3,000 copies. It's in mono, Italian, and English. All kinds of extras. The uncut version 
of disc one has a new audio commentary with writers Barry Forshaw and Kim Newman. Film scholar Stephen Thrower uh, has a 18 minute edition of Run Man Run. It also shows alternate opening credits. There's a theatrical trailer and extras. On disc two consists of Run Man Run, a theatrical cut, which is 84 minutes long, the international home video and theatrical verse version of the film with additional color grading completed exclusively for this release has new audio commentary by author Howard Hughes and filmmaker Richard New on the theatrical version. The limited edition slipcase featuring new artwork by Tony Stella is available uh, with essays by Howard Hughes and uh, it's only available on the first 333 issues uh also howard has a sub genre uh video called zapata western on this and there's a german blu-ray release of pancho via retet which is via rides released in 68 directed by buzz kulik and starring yul brenner robert mitchum and charles bronson this re was released on this 27th on Cape Light slash Alive label. It's in English with a running time of 122 minutes. Extras include the German trailer. Then we have another German release on January 27th, Ombre Hut Gets und Deinen Kopf, which is A Fistful of Death, 1971, directed by Demofilo Fadani, starring Hunt Powers and Klaus Kinski and Jeff Cameron. It was released on the True Grit slash Cargo Records label and is in Blu-ray and a DVD combo. It's limited to 500 copies. It's in 2K transfer from the original material. It's in German and Italian with German subtitles. Running times is 89 minutes and 89, 85 minutes. Extras include two cover options and has the extras of the German trader with Trek text. German trailer with voiceover, uh, English trailer, uh, photo gallery, a German Lola cult trailer, and a booklet by Martin Hensfeld with a mini poster. Another German release on Blu-ray and DVD, combo media book release of Killer Adios, 1968, was released on the 27th. This was directed by Primo Zeglia and starring Peter Lee Lawrence, Rosalba Neri, and Armando Calvo. It contains two discs. It's in German and Italian languages. Running time is 96 minutes. Extras include lobby cards and picture galleries, a trailer, a booklet, three covers, limited to 333 copies each. Also on the 23rd, another Blu-ray from Norway of Hanny Calder, 1971, was directed by Bert Kennedy and starring Raquel Welch, Robert Culp, and Ernest Borgnine, Jack Elam, and Strother Martin. This was released on the Soul Media label. It's in English with Swedish, Danish, and Finnish, and Norwegian subtitles, and runs 85 minutes. Uh, then we have uh, our biggest obit of the week, which is veteran Spanish director and writer Eugenio Martin, who died in Spain, Madrid, on January 23rd, he was 97. He was best remembered for three classic Spanish films, Horror Express in 72, The Ugly Ones in 66, and A Candle for the Devil in 73. Martin was born in Suta on May 15th, 1925, and shortly thereafter moved to Granada. There he would grow up secretly reading Lorca and Leon, Felipe and Poisonous, in poisoning himself with cinema. His first contact with that would later be his trade was in the cinema club that he founded and so on until censorship of a Jesuit, Jesuit made him desist. Granada was a prison to then, he said in an interview. When he decided to go into exile, he would get the possibility of studying at the Madrid Film Institute where he went and with that he was his first short film, Romantic Journey to Granada. Martin founded Granada Films to produce some of his own films. Eugenio is married to actress Lone Fert since 1970. 
He worked on four Euro Westerns, The Ugly Ones in 66 as a director and a writer, Duel in the Eclipse in 68 as director, Bad Man's River in 71 as director writer, and Pancho Villa in 71 as director. He was scheduled as a director on an unmade Western called Musara in 1964. Also passing away this week was cinematographer and cameraman Jiffy Makani, who died in Prague, Czech Republic on January 20th. He was 82. He was born on December 20th, 1940, and graduated 24 years later from the university as a cinematographer. At first, he worked for the Czechoslovak Army Film Corps, and as an assistant cameraman, he had participated in Jan Schmidt's Gloomy Vision, the end of August in the Ozone Hotel and the disillusioning fiasco or fresco, Long Live the Republic. He began his independent work as a cameraman with Schmidt's film, The Land Fairy Colony. Shot in the Soviet Union during the August invasion of Czechoslovakia. His funeral celebration gave a true picture of the village in the 1950s and 1960s, but ended up in the vault. It was not shown until 1990. McConney was the cinematography on two Euro Westerns, The Claim at Death Creek and David Sandell's Last Shot, both in 1972. Then we have German actor and voice dubber Wolfgang Dreger. He died in Hamburg, Germany on January 23rd. He was 95. Born in Berlin, Germany on January 9th, 1928, he started his career in radio and then became a familiar voice to German film fans. As an actor, Dreger appeared in the ZDF series, The Legacy of the Guddenbergs. He was the German voice of Woody Allen and James Cagney and the voice of the cartoon character Inspector Gadget. Dreger was married to fellow actress Rosemary Eich, born in 27. She died in 89. <clears throat> Excuse me. From this marriage came their son, Stefan, who was born in 53. He passed away in 2018. And daughter, Nicole, who was born in 56. After they divorced, he divorced. He married the model Marianne Klawitter, with whose union produced the son Kirsten in 66 and Alexander in Sasha, 67. I'll just go over a few of his uh, more famous Westerns. If you go to the uh, Westerns All Italia on a Facebook page, I give a complete listing and also on the blog. But anyways, he was the German voice of Fernando Sanchez in Fistful of Dollars in 65, uh, the German voice of Franco Balducci in 65's The Tramplers, the German voice of Klaus Kinski in The Ruthless Four in 67, and the German voice of Eduardo Fajardo in Seven Pistols for a Massacre, uh, the German voice of Antonio Cantafora in God Said to Cain in 70, and the German voice of Angel Del Pozo in 1971's Catlow. Okay, most recently, British actress Sylvia Sims died in a London nursing home on January 27th. She had just turned 89 on January 6th. Born Sylvia May Laura Sims in London, she starred in classic British films including Ice Cold and Alex and Victim. Other notable films in a career that stretched over seven decades included 1974's Cold War drama The Tamarind Seed, with Julie Andrews and Omar Sharif, and appeared as the Queen Mother Elizabeth, mother of Helen Mirren's Queen Elizabeth II, in Stephen Fears' Academy Award-winning 2006 film, The Queen. The following year, she was made an officer of the Order of the British Empire by the real Queen at Buckingham Palace. <clears throat> Sims appeared in one Euro Western, 1969's The Desperados, as Laura Galt. Uh, just a reminder to name, to tune in Jay and Courtney joiners tomorrow, Sunday, for another broadcast of their Professor Lampini's podcast of horrors and their special guest, Jeff Yeager, the godfather of monster kits. And that'll do it for this week. Hope to see you next week. In the meantime, this has been a... <laughs> so Roberto Genesi production, and we'll see you all next week. Adios, amigos.